Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your man, Rico. This is a little midday. Live, I got like three clients back to back to back, so I'm trying to get this live in and maybe get a little food before I uh, meet with my clients. <clears throat> and for those of you that know, yeah, I still see clients for subsidies and some mental health. If anybody want to get in on that, um, you know, get at me. Uh, place I work, I do contract with. They, uh, they accept insurance and everything. So, but anyway, for for more information, get at me. But anyway, um, <clears throat> every day, you know, more Kanye. But uh, I, I read a lot of comments, and of course, they go from the, from the ridiculous to the sublime, just weird, and you know. I don't, I don't care what the other community has to say about Kanye because, you know, they're the ones who probably rightfully so should be upset. And then uh, even deeper, the Jewish community. Not because he's saying anything that's disrespectful. He's just telling the truth about how many of them in their culture uh, love to manipulate and control and then play victim. So I my experience with uh kanye sharing his personal experience with the industry and hollywood has been that of information seeking and absorbing information not in it to attack him or judge him because i'm not i'm not that kind of slow i use every opportunity when a black celebrity breaks code breaks code and start telling it because you know while things are going good a lot of black celebrities don't say a word everything's going good but when they feel themselves being mis you know taken advantage of or being kicked out of those Hollywood circles and those contracts and those movies and record contracts and all that stuff, then they want to kind of tell it. And I'm not saying that this is just the main case with Kanye. What I'm saying is y'all soak this game up, listen, and make it and uh, take the information for what it is. Because basically what he's doing is repeating what Malcolm X, Dr. Cleet Abdul Muhammad, Minister Farrakhan, and others have said for decades about this particular group. But somehow we're acting all brand new like he's the first and only one to say this. And all of a sudden, oh my God, is that a semantic? Just hush, black folks. Read a goddamn book. But, uh, you know, I, uh, I was, <laughs> I'm, I'm, how can I say this? I got a chance to experience something that really just threw me off. And I'm going to bring it back to Kanye. Because I heard, I read a, a comment where somebody said, we need to cut him off from the community. And, uh, and I'm wondering, like, damn, what did Kanye do? How did Kanye become the problem in the black race or the black community? So, you know, all this stuff that's going on. So I uh, had the displeasure and the disappointment and the horror, shock and horror, to be somewhere where riding past a junior high school and I saw this, this little girl that looked to be 13 years old I guess standing in front of the school or leaving school and she looked like she was about 11 months pregnant I mean her belly was bigger than the school and it kind of took me off this Kanye thing because when I saw that 13 year old girl in front of that middle school or junior high school, I said, you know what? This is our problem. Kanye is not our problem in the black community. This 13, this girl looked 13, maybe 14 max. But she was, I'm telling you, her belly, her, be her body, her belly was bigger than her. And I said, what the hell is a 13-year-old coming out of junior high school or middle school, six, what's that, six, seven, eight? What is she doing coming out of there with a belly that damn big? Or not, not even that big, but pregnant. But I know, you know, that there's something, you know, I hadn't, I guess I hadn't been around or hadn't seen in a long time because I was actually shocked. And so it kind of, made me you know, change my focus and get back to what we really need to be talking about. Who gives a damn about what celebrities are doing? Because right here in our own backyard, right here in front of us every day, right here in the Walmart and Kroger's and the malls, we got 
black girls pregnant and shit. And ain't nobody hardly 18. And that's what... I wish we put that kind of energy into that. And the... The drug dealing and the gang banging and the, the, the cross dressing that so many young men are doing and the ratchet and the thugging and the thoughtness. I wish we put that, the energy that we're putting on Kanye, who has never done any harm to the black race. So what, what, so what about his damn opinions about George Floyd? Who gives a fuck? So what is this goddamn opinion or assertion about black people? It must be, slavery must be a choice. Who gives a fuck? But I'm talking about things that are actually happening to us. People who are actually doing things to us. And he's naming those folks, those that particular group of Jews and white folks. They blend together because they've all joined together trying to cancel out this one man. And a lot of us are sitting here thinking it's all right. Well, you know, he lost his Adidas contract. Well, you know, Def Jam and dropped him. Well, you know, Balenciaga, and, no, they dropping like flies. But that still ain't taught black folks shit yet. They know how to band together, but we don't. And then we're we'll talking about blocking somebody from a community. What fucking community? We have no community. We don't even know how to commune. Because we won't do what the Williams brothers have always said in a gospel song. Sweep around, sweep around our own front door. Come on, somebody. <laughs> we won't even do that. We're around here coming up with all these wonderful sayings and Facebook posts that are anti is so ugly against Kanye West, which who has never done anything in his music or his images to disparage or hurt blacks. But then again, y'all sitting right here celebrating Glorilla, Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, City Girls, even this little black chick who we talking about, I got murder on my mind. And she twerks in front of Planned Parenthood. And all these little funk ass rappers that talk about murdering other black men. Uh, violence against other black people. Pushing uh, LGBT and cross dressing and homosexuality through their ratchet and disgusting music that is pushed on, oh, that is, I'm sorry, that is financially funded and promoted by Jewish record executives. The same people Kanye is talking about. But see, it's easy to attack a heterosexual masculine black man. It's easy to throw your nose up at them, but you won't say shit about Kodak Black, Lil Yachty. Um, who was y'all know these little ratchet fuckers that y'all like? But you'll never, you don't want to kick them out of community. You want to say, we don't want Omarosa invited to the barbecue. We don't want Candace Owens to the barbecue, but y'all let Trina fat fuck and 50 your ass talking about some no bucking, no vote. She ain't kicked out of community. We're going to have to get ourselves together. We're going to have to get together. This shit is weird. Y'all right here attacking people like Kanye, who's actually bring, putting us up on game. He's putting us up on game. But see, let me tell y'all something. There is a wonderful book that was written by an even more wonderful person, a woman. Her name is Dr. Joy Legru Leary. Or Le Joy Leary, L-E-A-R-Y. Doctor, she wrote this book that I've read. I, I got a chance to meet her, hear her lecture, and I read the book. The book is called Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome. And it is a book that's very telling. It explains our behavior so well, how we respond to trauma today based on the residue of untreated trauma from four, 300 years of cattle, brutal, disgusting, horrible slavery. I know a lot of y'all, y'all, you niggas with good jobs. Y'all want this kind of way, you know, that was so long ago. People still doing it. I get it. A lot of us have done well. So a lot of us have moved forward. But if the masses of blacks are still manipulated under the same mentality of the slave residue. Go get that book. If I were in my, in my apartment, I would show you, I would show you the book. I may put the picture up there. It's called Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome. And she details exactly what the, the aftermath, how we think after having gone through that horrific period and how it was never addressed therapeutically, mentally, no, psychologically, never addressed. And they constantly use those same traumatic or slave tactics on supposedly intelligent blacks 
in the 21st century. And so the way we're responding to Kanye is, man, indicative of what she's saying in her book. We're all gathered around and watching the trauma of how they all, all of them are gathered around to attack Kanye. And we're all standing in a crowd watching them take this one man down. <laughs> and we're not, <laughs> we are, we're literally standing around. I know a lot of you, a lot of you got so many problems with Kanye. Y'all ain't have, y'all ain't know the man. Well, he said that. He said this. Who gives a fuck about what he said? Let's go about what he's done. We just ignore all of that. Kanye ain't went, Kanye ain't promoted going down no black neighborhoods. Shooting up no, robbing liquor stores. Robbing black women at gas stations. Sex trafficking. Uh... He, he's not a baby daddy of seven or nine goddamn different women. Ain't none of that. But he is the problem in the black race. Y'all kidding me, right? I'm talking about those who graduate from white colleges, black colleges, law school, who's attacking Kanye. You got to be kidding me. He is not our problem. Disappears our problem. We have not. We have not worked on the residue of that trauma. And so we, it comes out. And, and it seems like it comes out like clockwork when, it, when they need us to turn on one particular person. But we can't get, I can't get y'all to turn on the drug dealers. I can't get y'all to turn on future none of these old ratchet ass rappers like Trina and Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B and, and City Girls and all these um, big lotto. I can't get y'all to turn on these motherfuckers. I can't get you to turn on the drug dealers and the gang members. But y'all can turn on an easy target like a Kanye. You can turn on an easy target like an Omarosa. Y'all can turn on these people. But you won't turn on the people who's actually hurting our race. We see it every day. Who impregnated that 13-year-old girl? What's wrong with us? That shit is crazy. But we're supposed to have all the goddamn sense. We won't turn on BET. We won't turn on stars for putting all that bullshit out there. And everybody, let me tell y'all something. Everybody who got something to say about Kanye, whatever it is you got to say about him during his last two weeks with these folks been on his ass. And if you watch Lovecraft Country, if you watch P Valley, close your mouth as soon as this video of mine turns off. Close your fucking mouth. Because you don't have an intellectual or moral or spiritual leg to stand on talking about Kanye with your nasty ass. Shut up, you ignorant loser. Watching that bullshit. Bullshit like that. Even if you watch that crap called Power and Raising Cane and Black Mob, all the bullshit. But Kanye is our problem, huh? Not the Negroes that bring nothing but booty, duty, dunk ass, funk ass shit to TV. And let the Jews put that on TV. But Kanye is our problem. Come on. <sighs> Candace Owens is our problem. No, Candace is not our problem. Candace tried to, she tried to shed light on our issues. And please, don't tell me about her being a Trump supporter. Don't tell me about her being a, having a white man. Because Serena Williams got a white man and non-black children too. All the black women that y'all like, they got white husbands. Eve, all of them. They all got white husbands and none black children, so that can't be the issue. Well, she married a white man. All the people y'all like got white husbands too. How about that? Kanye married a white woman. <laughs> so black chicks can marry white men, but black men can't marry and make none black children with white women and Latinas? Get out of here. That argument is over, it's dead. Let's stick to the issues. And you can't tell me nothing that Kanye said that'll make me change my mind. Because I see what niggas do. And what they purposely do. Well, he, he allowed himself to be used uh, by them conservatives. Say that, who allowed themselves to be used as prostitutes and sambos and bootlicking sambos than the black rapper and your average black actor and actress? They around here doing all kinds of shit in these TV shows and movies. These rappers talking about nothing but disgusting shit. But Kanye is the one being used. And all of them, listen to me, all of them are Democrats. 
So stop. You can't win with that argument either. He allowed himself to be used. And then what's this other shit that he's been saying? All this anti-black rhetoric. One so-called Muslim brother. Shout out to Brother Shabazz. We still cool, but you wrong on this, bro. He's doing a lot of anti-commission, like anti-kemet. Somebody said, what's anti-commission? He's going to say anti-black. First of all, and there's nobody no more anti-black than these dumbass rappers that y'all love. With they changing their skin tone, lightening their skin tones with all this fucking weave. And uh, pushing the LGBT initiative and narrative. And these black NBA players wearing women's clothes and little children's clothes. But Kanye is the problem? Y'all need to hush. Kanye is not our problem. It's the people you like. They're the problem. And how come it's always somebody that we got to go against that white folks tell us not to like? Because y'all don't know to like them, dislike them on your own. White people got to point out the blacks. No, not, don't, y'all dislike that black. He said something anti-Semitic. And let you know, even Kanye, I know Kanye don't probably follow Dr. John Henry Clark and Dr. Ivan Biden Sotomayor, the scholars, but he had enough sense to know to say, we're Semitic. Not y'all. How am I going to be anti-Semitic or how am I going to be anti-myself? Shout out to Mr. Farrakhan. <laughs> that lets you know the masses of blacks who are complaining about Kanye right now don't even read. Yeah, them, them, them Zionist, Caucasian people with hook nose are not Jewish people. They're not the original Jews. The original Jews look like Bobby Brown and me and Whoopi Goldberg. But you have to read the right stuff. Instead of reading The Shade Room and Grio and The Root and all the bullshit. MSNBC. You have to read to know your history. And, and then the same people who are bitching about white folks being mad and uh, about CRT, but you, you, are, are you attacking Kanye? You're kidding me, right? Yeah, y'all ain't caring about history. At least white folks are uh, uh, well breasting up in history to know like, hey, I don't want that part of our history told, so we're going to make us some shit called CRT and make it a, a nationally funded <laughs> campaign. Put it even on, uh, make sure the politicians, the white politicians know that they can run off of that. We don't want no CRT. But we don't read enough to understand that we're repeating the same behaviors as a tra- traumatized people. I don't care if you got a new BMW, a big body Lexus, two-story home. If you complain about Kanye, like he's the problem, you're the problem. So I say shout out to Ye. And I like what he's done when, he, when he's done on these uh, on these white platforms. Because somehow, I don't know if y'all been paying attention, somehow all the black platforms won't even invite Kanye on to have a conversation. Yeah, Roland Martin fat ass, we talk, called them names, Kanye crazy ass. But he had him on his show. And you know what? You know what, Kanye? Don't go on his show. Go on the show to let you let you express your thoughts. Like he said, no censorship. But see, if he went on these old bought-off, bootlick-ass black por- formats like these morning hip-hop shows, these uh, BET shows, the Grio, the Root, all they're going to try to do is interrupt him. No, what he's sharing does not need to be interrupted. <coughs> <coughs> Hold on a minute. <coughs> Should have brought my bottle of water with me. <coughs> <coughs> it doesn't need to be interrupted. Just let the man tell the truth. See, they want to interrupt because you don't want him to say certain things. And what are those certain things? Well, the truth. <coughs> those of you who say, well, he ain't no freedom fighter. Well, who said he was? I'm not a freedom fighter either. Well, if you have an opinion or a thought <clears throat> that benefits a lot of people, let it, let it flow. That is Hubbard. What's up? You get that email, bro? I sent you the black book list. Uh, let me know if you got it. Give me a thumbs up if you got the book list, bro. <clears throat> so anyway, I just wanted to share that because when I saw that pregnant 13-year-old black girl standing in front of that middle school, uh, that bothered me. They took me somewhere. And I said, that's the, that's our problem. Uh, cool, bro. That's our problem. And again, you want to know why we responded, why we responded to Kanye? 
And anybody that's black who has not done anything to our race, but they happen to be um, conservative or libertarian or anything that's not Democrat, y'all have a problem with that. I need y'all to read this book called Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome by Dr. Joy Leary, L E A R Y. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You'll see exactly we're still behaving the same way that we behave right after 250 to 300 year stint under cattle slavery in this country. You know, that is how we're operating. I don't care how well you do in sports or in academia or wherever you excel, IT or whatever. We still seem to, we still <coughs> seem to get on cold when it comes to attacking anybody even remotely sounds like Dr. Cleet of Chairman Fred Hampton, Minister Farrakhan, Ida B. Wells Burnett, uh, Fannie Lou Hamer. Anybody that sounds like they're speaking up on behalf of black folks, anybody that sounds like they're talking about the need for reparations, anybody, all of us is getting in line <coughs> like the Pavlovian dog. Y'all need to study it, Ivan Pavlov and his experiment with the salivating dog and the doorbell. We know exactly what it is that causes us to start barking. Oh my God, he's upsetting white folks. He upsetting, he gonna make it make us all look bad. Well, she gonna make us all look bad because she talking about black revolution. You know, it don't make no damn sense. And then always talking about some kicking somebody out of community. Uh, we ain't gonna invite them. To the barbecue. Now here's this other stupid shit that Negroes love to say. And I like to think it was just black women that came with all this weak ass shit. Um, we'll trade you such and such for Rachel Dolezal. We'll trade you such and such for Shine King. You know, but they'll never trade out one of these old funk ass rappers and these old nasty ass black actors and actresses that work in shit like P Valley and do weird ass shit in these movies. You don't never want to trade them nasty motherfuckers out. But you want to trade out people who, because of their opinion, uh, that also not, not only because it's different than yours, but it causes you to reflect on yourself and how piece of shit you probably really are. Or because of their political affiliation. Darling, I don't pay attention to none of that shit. And then, uh, then you got another one. Man, we got to take your, your hood card, first of all. Hell, I'm sure a lot of people, let me tell you something. You can't take nobody's hood pass because uh, they already get a hood pass. So when they leave there and move to the white suburbs, say, like, mama, we're going to take your hood pass. Them, uh, they already ripped that shit up when they moved out. If I'm from Memphis, so moved out to Germantown or Colleyville. And in Dallas, when they moved their ass out of South Dallas, they moved to Plano, Frisco, Garland, the colony, Louisville. Got the fuck out of <laughs> So they already gave up their hood pass. You can't threaten nobody about saying, I'm going to take your hood pass. Who the fuck want to constantly live there anyway? But but anybody that sound like they are not a Democrat, I'm going to take your hood pass. Is that supposed to be a threat, motherfucker? And y'all don't know, people already gave up their hood pass. So anyway, I digress. I think my lunch is about ready. Let me get in here and uh, I'll get ready for my clients. I just wanted to say what's up. Oh yeah, by the way, y'all, in case you forgot, um, I still have my book for sale. It's in a PDF format. It's only ten dollars. Uh, ten dollars. Um, dollar sign Rico the Opinionist. O P I E N I O N I S T. And if you uh, decide to hit me on that Cash App to get it, please send an email address so I can see that PDF copy of the, my book. It's called The Greatest Pain I Ever Felt. Conversation. With an absent biological father who never wanted to be found. It, it's just basically talking about when I found out about my who my original or who my real dad was when I was 22 years old. Found out by accident. A little secret that came out. Shout out to my auntie who passed away, my aunt Pat. She let it slip out, and uh, and that's where the story began. Yeah. So uh, talks about the journey when I finally decided to meet the brother. And, he didn't want to meet me and all that. You know, y'all want to know what he said? When I knocked on his door, 
after about years of talking to him on the phone, he, you know, he didn't really want to do that. He said to me, he asked me, he said, hey, uh, so how did you find me? I said, well, Google Maps, MapQuest. He said, uh, he then said, I have to give you an A for effort because I worked repeatedly, I'm sorry, I worked aggressively over the years to prevent you from ever finding me. That's what he said to me upon our, him first laying eyes on me in person. So y'all check the book out. So far, those who bought it say it's a pretty cool little book. Uh, I like to get that around so we can have more conversations about father absenteeism and fatherlessness and impact and emotional impact on the kids. You know, how to, and how we, that's the stuff we should be aggressively attacking instead of attacking Kanye. And then some of us are actually reveling in him uh, losing his businesses. Who does that except for a broken, traumatized people? And that's what we are. We're a broken, traumatized race in America. But anyway, hey, if you're cool with me, fool with me. On that cash app and that PayPal, dollar sign, and um, Rico the Opinionist, PayPal, Rico the Opinionist, cash app. Y'all be cool. I'll talk to y'all in the future. Peace. Oh, uh, Mary Max, uh, get at me, girl, if you, uh, when I hang this thing up. <laughs>